Yeah, so the stock trading videos I've created so far have used a Robinhood private API, which means it's not really officially supported by Robinhood. Uh, it's not documented on their website. It's just people in the open source community that have, that have analyzed the Robinhood requests that are sent by the app or by the website, and they've kind of ported that over to Python packages. Uh, but I posted a new video on trading with Robinhood uh, on Twitter, and uh, it looks like a company called Alpaca responded and said, uh, please try out our commission-free trading API as well. And so, yeah, I want to do just that. Uh, I've never really heard of this company before. I just looked it up. It looks like they're another company based here in the Bay Area, uh, and it looks like kind of like an API-first company where you can build your own trading systems on top of their API. And so I thought I'd just... Uh, do like a quick review or try out the out of box experience and do some live coding and see how that works for us uh, and see how easy it is to make trades using uh, Alpaca here. Uh, so uh, click their website. Uh, looks like a nice landing page here, um, and it makes and it tells you what it does right out the gate. Uh, it says get API key, so I'm just going to do that, and we'll just start seeing how easy it is to get up and running and play some trades. Uh, so it says create your account, which I haven't done yet. So I'm going to use my Twitter name account, part-time Larry, and then enter a password. And it needs to be 12 characters long, and I'm going to sign up. And it tells me a little bit about uh, their uh, dashboard. It says they have a REST API with WebSockets, which is kind of cool, uh, and real-time market data. So I entered that. It says enter a verification code, so I'll check my email. It gave me a code. Uh, so I'll paste this into the box here. Put it in, click verify. So it's been verified and I can now log in. Okay, so it looks like some kind of dashboard here and it says paper trading. And so if you haven't traded before, uh, paper trading means that uh, you're not using real money yet. So you can test something out. So what I assume here, which is nice, uh, I like here is that uh, they have me kind of a sandbox where I can try out a trading strategy and you know see what would happen if I used a particular trading strategy uh, with $100,000 in the bank and $400,000 in buying power, which means I have like 4X margin, so I can trade on margin with this account and, and try out a bunch of things that I might not be able to do uh, with my normal account. Uh, the Robinhood videos I did earlier, I was actually placing real orders with the real market and it went right into the queue, so they didn't really have a sandbox for me to uh, play around with. So this is nice uh, right out the box. I like that. Um, there's nothing in my portfolio or history, which makes sense. I just signed up. It looks like they have an API endpoint and a way to generate a new key. So I assume I'm going to need an API key. So I'm going to click that. And there's my key right there. I copy it to a clipboard and I will paste it in. So uh, I created an empty, uh, a couple empty Python scripts for this. Uh, one called config, one called sample config, and one called trade.py. So there's no code here yet. Uh, and so what I usually assume is that there's going to be some keys or other things I need to store in a config file and that I'll need to put that in that file. So there's a sample config here. Um, so I'll do, let's see, they call this API key and secret key. Uh, people call them slightly different things. So I'm going to do API key equals... Um, and then paste that in. So this is a sample config. I'm gonna stop the video and put my real keys into the config.py. But so I'll just say uh, your API key here and uh, secret key equals uh, your secret key. Okay. And I'm gonna flip over and put that key inside of my config.py and then get going. Okay. So my keys are in the uh, config.py so I can use those. And I have an empty uh, trade.py here. So now what can I do with this? Uh, it looks like I have an endpoint URL and I like how it copies everything to the clipboard. So that's really easy. So I'll call that endpoint URL because I'm probably gonna use that all the time. Um, and what else? So there's no package that I know of yet. Uh, maybe they have some packages they provide, but I'm gonna, to understand this API better, I just wanna make like raw HTTP requests uh, to the library uh, or to the their API. Uh, so I like to use Python requests, pretty standard. Uh, I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed already, you can just install requests like so with pip, and you'll you'll have a way to make HTTP requests. So I'm going to import the request library, um, and I'm just going to try making a request uh, to their endpoint. So r equals request.get endpoint URL, 
and then I can access the content of that. And so let's see what happens when we hit it with nothing. So I'll clear that out, and then I'll do uh, trade.py. And it says endpoint not found, which kind of makes sense. Uh, we haven't specified like a specific endpoint. Uh, I'm just going to call this the base URL because I assume there's going to be other, uh, other sp more specific endpoints that we hit, and we'll build upon that. Okay. Um, so let's go to the documentation. Um, what jumps out? Where should I start? So I'm going to get started. Sign up for an API key. Learn how an API works. That sounds good. Um, click Web API Documents. Okay. So the first thing API, most APIs want is some way to uh, authenticate the API. So it looks like they start out with that right at the bat. So I'll clip right, uh, go right in. It says check out the Python client. Oh, which is nice. They already have a Python client for me, so I don't really need to write one myself. But as I said earlier, I want to understand it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just start with raw requests, and we'll write this code ourselves. Maybe we'll look at the Python client a little bit later. So under authentication, uh, it looks like you authenticate with that. Uh, API key and secret key, uh, which we've already uh, copied to a config file. So we have that. Uh, and they're using curl as the example here. So that's a way to just uh, execute API requests from the command line. Uh, but we're using Python uh, because it's a little bit uh, simpler uh, for me to remember all the parameters and things like that. So uh, API key. Okay. So it looks like you set a couple of headers here called uh, this uh, API key ID and secret key, which is good. And in requests, what you can do, they actually have a headers dictionary here, and you can just give it keys and values for the headers. Uh, so since I have one called API key, and then I can set that value to my API key, which is in my config file. So I'll import my conf, I'll do uh, from config import star, and then I can use my API key, which I have in there already. And I can do another header for the secret key. And so I'll do secret key. Okay, so that's in there. And I also have a secret key in my config file. So my headers are set. So I'm gonna request the base URL. Probably nothing's gonna happen still, but at least we're setting some headers. Uh, so what else do we need? They got a rate limit, makes sense. 200 requests every minute. It's very generous. Uh, I'm just an individual, so I'm not going to make 200 requests every minute. But I assume they're going to offer this service to you know financial institutions or other organizations or people making their own trading systems might need to make many requests per second. They might do some kind of high frequency thing where they make tons of requests uh, and probably to lift that rate limit, maybe uh, you'll pay some money or something like that. I don't know the business model yet. I'm just getting started. Um, there's some rules about time and numbers. All good. All good. Okay, so here's the endpoints. There's a bunch of endpoints, account, orders, so forth. Let's do account since it's the first one and see if we can figure out some information about the account. Uh, it looks like you make a get request to slash v2 account. Returns account associated with the API key. We have an API key. So I'll do that. And so I'll do account URL equals. Um, and we have a base URL now. So I'm going to go like that. And then we'll use just formatting to build up this URL. Uh, so we'll, this will just have the base URL and then slash account. So that's one of our endpoints. Um, so let's see. Instead of the base URL, let's do the account URL and pass the headers and run it. And wow, that's great. So we have it. So we have an ID right at the box. We're already making a successful API request. Uh, we just signed up, so I like when things succeed very early on and it's not frustrating, so I like this API. Um, so it shows me how much cash in my portfolio. So yeah, I got a lot of paper money to and paper money to spend, so I want to spend that money. So uh, so so cool. That's that's my account. Great. So we already have an endpoint working. So let's make some trades. So I don't care about the rest of this right now. Uh, it's cool to see all the options that we have right here. We got. Oh, cool. We have day trading flags and short short stock ability. We got margin. We got all kinds of stuff. So we can we can trade on margin. It's awesome. Okay. And orders. So let's... Okay. So we can get a list of orders. We don't have any orders yet, so there's nothing to get. Um, but we can also request... We can make a new order. 
put this v2 order, so we'll do that as well. So we'll do order URL equals, right? And then we can do slash v2 slash orders and format that with the base URL as well. Okay, so there's an order. Um, and let's make, let's go ahead and start making some functions. So I'll call this get account and this will just do that. And then oh, it looks like this is more like a string here that's returned from request. So since it's Python, I want to access these keys individually. So I want this to be a dictionary. Um, so what I'm going to do is return the response from this and I want it to be a dictionary. So you can do json.loads the content and then I'll take that string and make it very easy to access individual keys in that dictionary. So I want to import the JSON library there. And then, so let's call this one create order. Okay. And that's going to do request.post to orders URL and headers equals the same header. Uh, I don't want to repeat this twice. So we'll make a new constant up here called headers and that dictionary we can use in two places. So headers equals headers. And then we'll return json.loads r.content from there. Now to make an order, what do we want to order? What kind of stock do we want to buy? So there's some parameters we need, it looks like. So we have a symbol, quantity, side. Okay, so symbol, let's make all these parameters uh, to this function. Symbol, quantity, uh, type, and side, no, oh, side and type. And let's see, time and force is required. So I'll call that time and force. Okay. Um, post it. And how do we send these parameters to the request? Um, let's see. Order. So I want to know how to send these parameters in. And I might have missed it. Is this just understand orders okay oh order objects okay yeah it just looks like JSON that it's gonna accept so yeah let's let's try this out with these keys here uh, quantity type and so forth so let's post some JSON over to this orders API so I'm gonna call this data and we're just gonna send in a JSON object. We're gonna start with the Python dictionary first, and then we'll do a symbol, and then whatever symbols passed in, and we'll do quantity, quantity, and then side, and then, so let's make a key for each of these parameters that come in. Um, and we'll probably change up how this works a little bit later. I just wanna make sure this works. So time and force, Time and force. Okay. Good deal. We have a dictionary of data. Uh, and we're posting JSON over. So request has the ability to post JSON. So you can do data equals, but you can also do JSON equals, and that's like a shortcut. And so this dictionary will automatically become JSON and it'll set the headers and everything up to uh, post JSON data uh, to this endpoint. So the JSON equals data. And if I do that, uh, let's and let's go ahead and call this function. So create order, and then I'm going to give it some real parameters. So what do we want to buy? Uh, I'm going to buy Apple stock. So I'll do symbol Apple, and then quantity 100 shares of Apple. We want a buy, and then the type of order. What's the type? So create an order, request an order. Type is market limit stop or stop. So we have a lot of money here. We have $400,000 of buying power. So I'm just gonna do a market order cause we can buy whatever we want. Market order and then time and force day GTC OPG. What do all these mean? Okay, GTC I think means good till canceled. So, you know, we can either have the trade expire at the end of the day if it doesn't get filled or we can have good till canceled. Uh, I'm just going to use GTC actually because I want this trade to just be out there and ready to go. So I'm going to do create order um, and we're returning a response. So I'm going to get response equals and then we're going to print the response. And let's run that and see what we get. Sweet, works. No mistakes out of the box around the first time. 
Uh, so it gives us an ID for the order and when it was created, a bunch of information with the symbol. It's an equity, quantity, so forth. Not filled yet. Market's not open. So now that I've uh, submitted and posted an order, I'm going to assume uh, it looked like it gave me a transaction ID and all this stuff. So I'm going to assume if I refresh this dashboard that my order is going to be out there. And you can see something changed already. It says I have less buying power. That makes sense because Apple's like 200 something a share, I think, right now. Uh, and I just issued an order for 100 shares. And look at that. Right there, we got our order that's submitted and it's pending right now because the market's not open. So we have an order in place to buy 100 shares of Apple stock. Let's just create a few more just for fun. Uh, so let's create another order for uh, Microsoft. So I'll replace this and buy like 1,000 shares. And let's really spend some money here and do that. And I'm gonna trade that stock. And then I'm gonna refresh. I'm probably gonna have a lot less money. Only $236,000 left. And you see I have Microsoft in my queue. Um, and I'm going to use that other endpoint we saw earlier called get orders. And what we'll do with that is just uh, request the orders URL. And we need our headers here. Um, and we'll return json.loads r.contents. And let's make sure that works. Let's see if we can programmatically get our URLs. So uh, let's see, get orders. Okay, and then we'll say orders equals get orders. Print those out. I'll clear this out just to clear some room. And then print our orders. And we run it. Uh, it says response is not defined. And why is that? Because I have this there. Okay. Okay, and it looks like, yeah, we got a list of orders. And that was super easy. Um, so yeah, I like this uh, alpaca out the gate here. It seemed very easy. I like that I can easily test an API. Um, so yeah, I want to I want to try that out. So there's live trading here. Haven't tried that yet, but so far I'm impressed with the sandbox and the out of box experience. Like I literally just started messing this with this a few minutes ago, um, and then everything worked really well. So um, and I look at the documentation more, and you know maybe check out some of the the forums and all of that and see how it works and maybe get involved in that community uh, and post this video. Uh, thanks a lot um, and stay tuned. There'll be more uh, videos posted at uh, Part Time Larry right here so you can follow me on Twitter right there to see more content like this. Thanks.